Welcome to our first lecture in straight lines in coordinate geometry. Um, let us start with the very basics. I'm just assuming that you have seen the Cartesian plane or the coordinate plane at some point in your life, maybe a few years ago or only recently, but yeah, I'm not assuming much. So let's start with the very basic definitions. So what is what, what do we mean by the coordinate plane or the coordinate system? So we mean two perpendicular lines. The intersection of these perpendicular lines is called the origin. So O is the is called the origin. And the coordinates, uh, yeah, so I have to define what is meant by the coordinates of a point. So suppose I have a point here. Then what are the coordinates of P? Uh, drop a perpendicular from P to the two, uh, two lines. So this is one perpendicular, this is another perpendicular. So whatever is this distance, this distance is called the abscissa or the x coordinate of P. So this is the, the signed distance. This is the abscissa, oops. This is the abscissa. I don't know if, I, if this is the correct spelling, but this is called the abscissa or the x coordinate. x coordinate of P and this signed distance is called the ordinate or y coordinate of p. So when I say sine distance, I just mean that if suppose this point instead of being here, it were here, then if you drop the perpendicular, this is towards the left of the origin. So this would be a negative, negative abscissa and the ordinate is, is still positive. Here, both the ordinate and abscissa are negative. And here the abscissa is positive, but the ordinate is negative. So we have these concepts, abscissa and ordinate. Uh, yeah, these concepts we have. And x-axis, so x-axis is those points whose ordinate is zero. So what are those points? Basically those points where this perpendicular distance is zero. So all the points lying on this, this axis or this, this line, this is called the x-axis. So this is the x-axis. So similarly, y-axis is those points where the abscissa is zero. So that's basically these points and this is called the y-axis. Right, so I'm sure you have seen these notions prior to this particular lecture. And uh, let's proceed. So we have the distance formula. Suppose we have two points P and Q and their coordinates are x1, y1, x2, y2. So yeah, I should have mentioned that. When we have a point P and its abscissa is x and the, let's say the abscissa is A, and the ordinate is b, then we instead of instead of p, we may also write this ordered pair a comma b. So this a comma b denotes the point p whose abscissa is a and ordinate is b. Yeah. So when I say we have a point x1, y1, it just means that the abscissa is x1 and the ordinate is y1, and similarly for q. So we want to write down a formula for the distance between p and q, and the formula is this: distance between p and q is you take the difference between the abscissa and square it, difference between the ordinates and square it, and take the square root. And where is this formula coming from? That That is clear because all one needs to do is just draw this horizontal line here parallel to the x-axis, draw the vertical line parallel to the y-axis, then let's say this is a. So what is what is p a? Well, one can, one can agree that distance between p and q is nothing but p a square plus q a square square root. This is by the Pythagoras theorem. p a square plus q a square square root should be this distance by Pythagoras theorem. And what is p a? p a is just the this difference between the x coordinates or the abscissas of a and p. But the abscissa of a is same as the abscissa of q because both lie on, on a line parallel to the y-axis. They have the same abscissas. And uh, similarly for to, to find the ordinate of A, it's just same as the ordinate of P. So the, so the point A is nothing but 
uh, x2 y1 and therefore this distance is nothing but x2 minus x1 and that distance is y2 minus y1 and therefore pa square is that and pqa square is that so that gives the distance formula midpoints so suppose we have two points whose coordinates are x1 y1 x2 y2 then we want to find a formula for the coordinates of the midpoint of these two points so again as before we will draw two lines one parallel to the x-axis passing through the first one and the other parallel to the y-axis passing through the second one and let's say the midpoint is here let's call that m we want to find its coordinates so here's what we do we will draw a line parallel to the y-axis through m so this line is parallel to the y-axis passing through m and uh, by midpoint theorem that we learned in elementary geometry let me recall what is the midpoint theorem so it says the following suppose we have any triangle let me draw it this way suppose we have any triangle let's call that maybe abc and uh, we have midpoint of ab and suppose we draw a line parallel to ac passing through m right so we have the midpoint of ab and we draw a line parallel to ac passing through m then it also passes through the midpoint of bc so that's a beautiful theorem that we learned in elementary geometry high school plane geometry and that is what we are going to use so we have the midpoint of this particular side and we have the triangle is this and we have drawn a line parallel to this side so this point is going to be the midpoint of this side all right but what is this point this point is x2 y1 as we saw in the previous slide this is x2 y1 and this is x1 y1 so what is the midpoint of of this side that is going to be so basically this point is going to be x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 this is clear because basically it's it's a line where the y coordinate sort of does not matter only the x coordinate matters and therefore it's clear that this is going to the midpoint or you can just use the distance formula the distance of this point with this point if you calculate this just cancels out and what remains is um, x2 minus x1 whole square by x2 minus x1 by 2 and same for this so if you just use the distance formula you'll see that this distance is equal to that distance but you don't need to use the distance formula to come up with this okay but now the point is that whatever is the abscissa of this orange point same is the abscissa of m because this line is parallel to the y-axis so the abscissa of m is x1 plus x2 by 2 and similarly the ordinate of m would be y1 plus y2 by 2 so it's a very nice uh, formula the midpoint of so let me write it down the midpoint of the line segment joining the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 plus y2 by 2 so that's the formula for midpoints a generalization of this is the following suppose we have two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and we want to find the coordinates of the point p let's say which divides this line segment in the ratio a is to b so suppose a were 2 and b were 1 then this point p is closer to the the you know this point than that point and in fact what that would say if suppose a were 2 and b is 1 it says that this distance is half of that distance so can we write down the formula for that yes we can and the formula for p is b x1 plus a x2 by a plus b comma b y1 plus a y2 upon a plus b and uh, this can be proved by using similarities rather than the midpoint theorem just use the similarity theorem so again just draw a line parallel to that and just notice that this triangle is similar to that triangle and i leave it as an exercise for you to figure this out so this is called the section formula it is an immediate generalization of the midpoint formula because if you put a equals b then p would become the midpoint and uh, this would turn out to be the x1 plus x2 by 2 and that would be y1 plus y2 by 2 okay so now let's see some 
examples, some very simple examples to get comfortable. So we have an equilateral triangle whose base AB is along the y-axis and it is also given to us that the midpoint of the base is the origin. So this is the midpoint of the side AB and let's say 2A is the length of any of the three sides of the equilateral triangle. Then our job is to find the coordinates for the vertices meaning A, B and C for this triangle. Now it's very easy. So let me translate this figure here. Let me just solve it in the figure itself. So we know that this whole thing is 2A that's given to us. This is one side and every side has length 2A. We are also given that this is the midpoint. So this length is A and that length is A. And since this is along the y-axis, the coordinates of A would be then 0 comma A. And the coordinates of B is B R 0 comma minus A. So that we can immediately write just uh, by, you know, basic kind of common sense, you could say. And now what about the coordinates of C? So let's say the coordinates of C are, uh, let's say B comma zero. Maybe I shouldn't use B, but uh, let's say X comma zero. So this is equal to X comma zero. We want to find X in terms of A. Why can we take it X comma zero? Because C lies on the X axis. So first we need to, uh, you know, argue that the point C will lie on the X axis. So we are given that uh, the base is along the Y axis. And since it is an equilateral triangle, the third vertex will lie on the perpendicular bisector of this side. And the perpendicular bisector of this size of the side is the x-axis and hence the point C lies on the x-axis and therefore its coordinates are of this form x comma zero. The ordinate will be zero. And now all we will do is use the distance formula. So the distance between C and B is 2a. Therefore x minus zero square plus zero minus minus a square square root this is equal to 2a just by the distance formula used with for the point C and B, which gives us x square plus a square is equal to 4a square, which gives x square is equal to 3a square, which gives x equals plus minus 3 plus minus square root 3a. So it could be here or it could be in the reflected thing, you know, so it, the triangle could look like this or, or that. So both of those solutions are coming from this. So these are the coordinates. The coordinates of A and B are written here and the coordinate of C is could be plus minus root 3A comma 0. Very simple problem. And now lastly we will take one more example. So we have a circle whose center lies at minus 2 comma 5 and there is a diameter whose one end point is given 3 comma minus 7. We need to find the coordinates of the other end. And circles is another topic in coordinate geometry. This particular lecture series is about straight lines. We will study circles separately, but for this problem one does not need to know anything about the circles apart from what one knows from elementary geometry. So we need to find the coordinates of this point and let's say the coordinates are x comma y. So since this is the diameter, this point, the center of the circle is the midpoint of the diameter. And therefore by the midpoint formula, x plus 3 divided by 2 uh, comma y minus 7 divided by 2. This this is same as the center minus 2 comma 5 center of the circle and therefore x plus 3 by 2 is equal to minus 2 and y minus 7 by 2 is equal to 5 which gives x equals um, minus 4 minus 3 which is minus 7 and y equals 17. So the coordinates of uh, the final answer is minus 7 comma 17 if I'm not making any calculation error. Yeah, I think it is correct. So yeah, so that's for the first lecture. Uh, as usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.